So I'd like to introduce you to graphic styles in Illustrator because, well, they're so cool, okay? Uh, there's something that I use a lot and something that I think that a lot of us should be using. If you go to the graphic styles panel, which is on the right-hand side over here usually, or under window you'll find it, you'll see a series of well, thumbnails in here that you can click on to apply formatting to objects. Now, graphic styles are meant for text formatting as well as object formatting. So you can use them for either or. Or you can use them for both. It doesn't really matter. The great thing about graphic styles is that, well, they live with one document, but you can export them or save them for any document you want. And Illustrator comes with a whole bunch of them. I actually, I love some of these. Uh, some of these are so dated it's disgusting. But uh, if you go to like Vonster pattern styles, these are pretty cool. You'll see that there are a series of pattern styles built in here that if you click on one of these, if you have an object selected or something selected, it'll apply it. you got to be careful of that. But you'll see that it's going to take that graphic style, the pattern style, and put it in here. And you can use it on your content. Now, it's kind of tricky because if you try and use it on, like, text and different things like that, you'll see that, well, there you go. It looks good, right? <laughs> okay. So we have a bunch of graphic styles that are saved with the program, which is awesome. There's another one. Welcome to the 80s. Scribble effects. Nice. Uh, let me close these up. What if you want to create your own? Okay, well, I'm going to select this and press D to go back to default, white and black. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And a lot of us will use graphic styles to save time, also for consistency's sake. So if I go to the button over here, this, this one right here, and suppose that I want to create a series of buttons that look identical to each other. Well, to create a graphic style, you can just drag the object into the graphic styles panel, and there you go. It just sucked all the formatting off of it and saved it in the graphic styles panel. Now, if I want to then go over to another object, for instance, like let's say this one right here, and apply it, well, there's 50 ways you can do this, but you just click on the graphic style, and there it is. Now, there's some things that will not get saved in a graphic style, and one of them to me is kind of surprising, but it's part of the shape, so I get it. If I go to, let's say, round the corners, so if I go to the direct selection tool, and I round the corners on something like this, okay, and let me do this. I'm actually going to go over and change some other appearance properties just so we can see it. If you look in the appearance panel, by now, if you do use Illustrator and you use it often, I should say, you should be using the appearance panel. Appearance panel is kind of like history for the object. It shows you what's done to something if you click on it. It'll tell you what the object is and everything applied. And you can see right here that there's actually a drop shadow on there that I had turned off. Let me turn that back on. Now, I want to save this formatting as is but I want to replace the graphic style. So a couple ways you can do this. You can take the object itself, and Option on Mac, Alt on Windows. you got to hold the key down. As I drag, hold down Option on Mac, Alt or Windows. Drop it right on top of the existing graphic style thumbnail. Let go of the mouse, let go of the key, and you've updated everywhere that's being used. Let me zoom out. Not that far. And you can see that, well, there's the button right there, and it now has, if you take a look, click on it. It's got a drop shadow on. It's very subtle. Sorry about that. That's kind of a dumb example. But we'll notice one thing that's not happening here. The rounded corners are not happening because you can round the corners independently, all together. It really kind of depends. So that's why they don't save that within a graphic style. Now, we can also use a graphic style on text if we want to. If I click on this text object right here, you can see I've, I mean, I haven't done that much to it, but I went in and created a couple fills and a stroke, and I've got them set on top of each other. And I've got some a little bit fancier things going on here with offset path, but that just makes it so that you know I can a fill put a fill on top of something that's transparent, like a pattern. Now, if I want to, I can save this really easily. Another way to save a graphic style is to take the little appearance cube here in the appearance panel and drag it into the graphic styles panel. There we go. Now I can go to some other text, for instance, let's say like services here and apply it to see what it looks like, and wow, that looks horrendous. Okay, let me undo that. Uh, the one thing you really want to try and do is you want to preview a style on something. So you can click on it, see what it looks like, but you can also do this. If you right-click on a graphic style, you'll see that it's going to preview on text or preview on object if you want right there. That's what my text is going to look like. You can also, and I don't, I don't, I don't find this to be extremely useful, but you can also go out to the Graphic Styles panel menu here, and you can say, let's see a text for preview. Now, it just puts a letter T out there, and 
right click, you'll see the same thing. It'll show you the text itself. Okay. So it's kind of a quick, quick way to do that. But we can go out then and we can try and apply some of this and see what it does. And you'll notice that what it's essentially doing as a graphic style is it's copying as much of the appearance panel as it can and applying it to the object. Okay. This goes a lot further. There's a lot more that we can do with these. And one of the things that I tend to, to look at is in the graphic styles panel menu, you'll see override character color. You can, if you want to, say, don't override the character color or the text color for the text. Just apply all the appearance stuff from the graphic style on top of it. And sometimes that gives you different, uh, I don't know, different uh, ways to look at it or different ways it happens. You can also, if you want to, if you decide this looks horrendous, then I want to like wipe the formatting off of this. If you saved another graphic style, you can reapply it. You can also go to the appearance panel and you'll see what's called clear appearance down here at the bottom. And you can kind of wipe off the appearance. Now, it, it may not look exactly the way it looked before, but in this case it does. If you go to an object, let's say like a button or anything else for that matter, and you can see that the graphic style is applied because it's got a highlight around the, the style thumbnail. You can always go down here and say break the link to the graphic style. Now, it's not really going to change the appearance of the object, but it's just going to make it so that it won't update if the graphic style updates. Now, how can you tell the graphic style is applied to something? Well, I just showed you one. It had the little thing around it. So if, if I undo that, let me go to Edit Undo. You're going to say, oh, okay, it's got this highlight around it. But if you also look in the Appearance panel, you're going to see at the top here, if you have the right thing selected, it's going to say colon, graphic style, whatever the name is. It's, that's the name of the graphic style. This is called Graphic Style 3. If you change the name of the graphic style by double-clicking on this, and I'll call it, like, ugly, and then click OK, you'll see, oh, path, ugly. There you go. That's the name of the graphic style applied. So there's a lot of ways to be able to work with these. Know that they can save you a lot of time. They can be a little frustrating because they won't always work when you apply them to something that already has formatting on it. So consider applying these to, to content that doesn't have any formatting or stripped-down formatting, if you will. But... It's a way to maintain consistency. It's also a way to work faster.